Tucker Carlson ignites a mainstream media civil war as the woke Meghan Markle Oprah interview backfires. In this video, we're going to take a look at the latest media firestorm provoked by Tucker Carlson against the New York Times, how the Oprah interview with the woke royals has come under severe attack, and how both situations demonstrate that the hypocritical victimology exploited by members of the permanent privilege class is backfiring big time. You're not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Wonderful to be with you. As always, we're here to give you each and every single day conservative hope in the midst of these turbulent and trying times. Help me to think better so you can feel better and provide for you a patriot path to freedom. So make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Before we begin, let's give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, and that's our good friends over at Biotrust and their awesome immune system supporting product, Ageless Body. With their rapid advances in science over the years, there are much more powerful and effective ways to boost your immune system than just taking, you know, mega doses of vitamin C. In fact, our sponsors over at Biotrust have combined four of the world's best immune supporting powerhouses along with that mega dose of vitamin C into their number one immune support product, Ageless Body. Simply put, Ageless Body provides you five of the most powerful immune support ingredients available. And best of all, if you click on that link below today, you can now get Ageless Body at their lowest price ever, 51% off with free U.S. shipping to boot. So don't wait. Click on that link or go to agewithsteveturley.com. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. Tucker Carlson has done nothing less than ignite a civil war within the mainstream media. We once again have Fox News pitted against a slew of leftist activists disguised as journalists for simply calling out one of their activist journalists. It all goes back to a tweet sent out by the New York Times social media reporter Taylor, Taylor Lorenz on Monday of this week, which was the designated International Women's Day. And so Lorenz wrote... For International Women's Day, please consider supporting women enduring online harassment. It's not an exaggeration to say that the harassment and smear campaign I've had to endure over the past year has destroyed my life. No one should have to go through this. Now, I got to say, just by reading this, it seems at least to me that these concocted days celebrating things like International Women's Day... They become little more than platforms for woke tweets like the one coming from Lorenz. And that's precisely how Tucker Carlson interpreted it. So on Tucker's show the other night, he had as his guest the co-founder of The Federalist, a fellow by the name of Sean Davis. And Davis described Lorenz as, quote, the journalism equivalent of the creeper creeping by the schoolyard asking the kids if they want any free attention. Now, what he's referring to there is the fact that this New York Times reporter, Taylor Lorenz, has built the reputation of being what critics call a tattletale journalist. So, for example, last month, Lorenz came under fire for falsely accusing the venture capitalist Mark Andreessen for using incendiary language during a chat room discussion on the, the new social media app Clubhouse. And so, in the face of mounting evidence that she had lied, that that it didn't happen... She made a public mea culpa, but fell short of an actual apology. So that's what we're dealing with here. And so Tucker Carlson had this fellow, Sean Davis, on his show last night. And Davis claimed that Lorenz stalks teenagers on the internet, which according to Davis, she admits she does. She says as much, and she even talks about how if she were a dude doing what she were doing, people would think it was kind of creepy. And Tucker recalled that Lorenz had actually reached out to Claudia Conway, who's the teenage daughter of Lincoln Project co-founder George Conway and former Trump White House official Kellyanne Conway. And she tried to get her to reveal things without even asking her parents permission she could talk to her. And so Davis said that this is simply beyond comprehension, how a person like this plays the victim on International Women's Day. Quote, what happens is when these little Bolshevik totalitarians get mad at you and accuse you of harassing them or being violent, what they actually want is to avoid any accountability for their own actions. They use their identity as a sword and as a shield. I could say things against you because of my identity, but you can't come after me because of my identity. It's disgusting. Now, obviously... Davis isn't alone in his assessment here. Independent journalist Glenn Greenwald couldn't hold back his disgust at Lorenz's self-appointed victimhood, saying this, quote, Taylor Lorenz is a star reporter with the most 
influential newspaper in the U.S., arguably the West. Her work regularly appears on its front page. Her attempt to claim this level of victimhood is revolting. She should try to find out what real persecution of journalists entails. If you're going to insinuate yourself into polarizing political debates and report, or pretend to report on the powerful, you're going to be attacked online. It could be extra toxic due to race, gender, sexual orientation, etc. But it's still just online insults. That's not persecution. With all the suffering and deprivation, real persecution in the world, it's utterly astonishing how often coddled, well-paid, highly privileged, coit, insulted, protected U.S. elites posture as the world's most oppressed class. It's quite sickening and offensive. And again, Greenwald isn't alone in his criticism of Lorenz Fain victim victimization. But for some reason, the New York Times, as well as other mainstream media outlets, decided to dismiss all of those responses and critiques and do their best to defend Lorenz against Tucker Carlson's, quote, cruel attacks. The Times issued a brief statement saying, quote, in a now familiar move, Tucker Carlson opened his show last night by attacking a journalist. It was a calculated and cruel tactic, which he regularly deploys to unleash a wave of harassment and vitriol at his intended target. Taylor Lorenz is a talented New York Times journalist doing timely and essential reporting. Journalists should be able to do their jobs without facing harassment. And they weren't alone. The New York Times was joined by their fellow left-wing media monopolists, such as the Washington Post, the AP, the Daily Beast, Variety, and a slew of other left-wing propagandists disguised as journalists who together excoriated Tucker for his vicious attack against a New York Times reporter simply doing her virtuous job. But of course, Tucker didn't back down. So he tweeted out, journalists making their living trying to destroy your life, but if you say a single word about it, you're a criminal, a moral monster. <laughs> and his colleague Britt Hume had some words of his own. This is just pathetic. The Times should have told Ms. Lorenz that this is America, where journalists who are free to use their platforms to criticize others should expect to be criticized, sometimes harshly and unfairly, in return. This is not harassment. Get a grip. So what's going on here? What are we seeing unfold in this crazy mainstream media civil war? Well, before we get into it, if you are looking for a hopeful alternative to all the fake news nonsense that's being spewed out there on a daily basis from the likes of the New York Times or CNN or MSNBC, you're going to find no better antidote than what's in the pages of my book, The Return of of Christendom. Now, do not take my word for it. Just read through the reviews on Amazon. There's over 260 of them, and you're going to see how this book cuts through all the cynicism and despair that we so often feel living in this crazy, victimized, globalized world. So on page after page, I give you all the data, the stats, the indicators that show you nothing less than a new conservative Christian majority is emerging, indeed, through the United States and even in Europe, and it's already transforming the world into a far more nationalist, populist, and traditionalist world. And if you click on that link below today, we're offering it to you for a limited time at a 50% discount. That's right, half off, gang, 50%. So don't wait. It's a limited time offer. Click on that link and get your book at a super discount today and arm yourself with the information you need to crush fake news once and for all. All right, so to understand what's going on here, we need to look no further than the whole fallout from the privileged princess, Meghan Markle. Now, as you know, the woke duo, Harry and, Harry and Meghan, aired their much-anticipated interview with Oprah. And what was so simply stunning in all this, I mean, Brendan O'Neill put it best, was just how utterly unbearable the victim complex was. And we're not just talking the royal cry bullies here. Even Oprah put herself into the whole victim mode. I mean, the sheer magnitude of their embarrassing cringeworthiness, all three of them, simply cannot be exaggerated. Here's how O'Neill summarized it. I think it was so good. Quote, in their two-hour sit-down with Oprah Winfrey, Harry and Meghan drove a long knife into the monarchy. They implied that it's a cold, cut-off, racist institution that's so bereft of basic human feeling that drove a youngish, sensitive woman, Ms. Markle, to contemplate suicide. It was Diana's chat with Martin Bashir on steroids, a clash of royal houses worthy of a George R. R. Martin story. It was also a grotesque spectacle. 
Emotionally manipulative, self-obsessed, and a clear attempt by Harry and Meghan to position themselves as the king and queen of victim politics. But why are they doing this? Why is Meghan Markle sitting there in a $4,500 dress in a posh upscale garden trying to make herself look like a victim along with this billionaire? It's for the very same reason this New York Times leftist reporter is doing it. This is what you have to do to appear as a paragon of virtue in a woke world. If you want to get ahead in a social justice warrior jungle, you have to come across as a victim. Now, why is that? Well, what we have to understand is that cultural Marxists insist on viewing the world as a struggle between group identities characterized by oppressed versus oppressor. And here's the key. The oppressed have the moral high ground solely by definition being oppressed. Cultural Marxists see the world as a struggle between oppressed and oppressor, you know, victim and victimizer, and the oppressed victim has the moral high ground solely for being an oppressed victim. Victimhood is virtue in a cultural Marxist world. Don't forget that. Victimhood is virtue. So it shouldn't surprise us that cultural Marxists like Meghan Markle and this New York Times so-called journalist are not only attempting to destroy traditional Western culture and identity and replace it with a new multicultural coalition of grievance groups, but what we're finding is that the Marxists themselves are more and more reinventing themselves so as to be able to identify as a member of one of these victim groups so as to benefit from the virtues of their victimology. In short, both Megan and the New York Times journalists are ironically guilty of cultural appropriation. They're adopting for themselves the very benefits of victimology, but without having to actually be victims. That's what makes their attempts at victimhood so pathetically cringeworthy. And that is why more and more people have had it with this ridiculous, insane, woke world. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. And also check out some of our cool merch by clicking on the link below. And you definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on how Democratic officials are getting wrecked over their roles in COVID nursing home deaths as the California recall effort to get rid of gruesome newsome. It's 2 million signatures. You're not going to want to miss that. So make sure to click on the link, and I'll see you over there.